गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी टुडे वी शेल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द नेक्स्ट स्किल इन डेवलपिंग अ लैंग्वेज व्हिच इज द राइटिंग स्किल एज वी सेड लैंग्वेज लर्निंग इज बेसिकली अ स्किल दैट हैज टू बी मास्टर्ड विद कांस्टेंट एक्सपोजिशन टू द लैंग्वेज नंबर 1 प्रैक्टिसिंग इट मेटिकुलसली नंबर 2 एंड मास्टरिंग इट स्किल्स ऑफ लिसनिंग स्पीकिंग रीडिंग and writing l s r and w listening and reading are the passive skills because only the reader or the listener can comprehend as to how much of the listened thing or the read thing is understood whereas speaking and writing are supposed to be the active skills because for speaking and writing you require audience maybe one or more than one listening and reading are intrapersonal skills whereas speaking and writing are interpersonal communication skills that need to be developed nevertheless we always aim at the integration of listening speaking reading and writing because no skill can be taught individually or no skill can be learned individually when you read a book you automatically think about it and talk about the book thereby using the speaking skill as well or when you read a book maybe you write an article upon it thereby developing the writing skill similarly is when you listen to a lecture you take down the notes thereby automatically contributing to the writing skill and you talk about the listened lecture to your students or to your friends and thereby developing the speaking skill also it is a proven fact by research that good listening will give rise to good speaking skill and good reading definitely helps you to become a good writer listening speaking reading and writing are the four important skills that need to be mastered while learning a particular language when we talk about writing skill the most important thing that we need to understand is to analyze the main purpose of communication write correctly to communicate the single purpose of correspondence when we write we always have to revise the draft and compose it in the appropriate electronic or manuscript form then the write up is to be produced in the finished form after at least one or more than one proofreading because when we print it and publish it the writing becomes a document forever so we should be very very careful with respect to the proofreading part of it in terms of spellings grammaticality and the meaning that we exactly want to communicate when we produce a piece of writing we should be clear fluent and effective in communicating our ideas to others so the very first thing that we need to take into account while writing is the mechanics of writing the mechanics of writing will contribute to the handwriting the neatness that we maintain the spacing that we maintain the margins that we leave when we are writing etc then comes the grammar part of it and when we talk about the grammar part of it it begins with spelling and then goes ahead to punctuation then comes the syntax syntax is how the words get united to form the phrases clauses and sentences to communicate the meaning that we really want to communicate then comes the content part of it the content is what exactly are we trying to talk whether we are logically connecting everything whether the proper cohesion and coherence are maintained while we are communicating it to our audience and then the writer's process begins what should be the beginning of a particular write up what should be the body of it how can we organize it into different paragraphs and what could be the logical conclusion to whatever write up we are maintaining the next important thing that we need to keep in mind while writing is the audience who exactly is our audience who are the readers whom are we writing to our expression our language all depends upon the audience to which we are targeting moreover the purpose of our writing also is very important what is the purpose of our write up do we want the readers to read and enjoy do we want our readers 
to get the overall idea about a particular topic? Is it informative writing? Is it descriptive writing? Is it elaborative writing? Is it argumentative one? Depending upon the type of the purpose that we maintain, our choice of words, our vocabulary, our idioms and the tone depend. And then slowly how we are organizing it into paragraphs and the entire essay constitute the piece of writing that we are writing. So the direction of writing is the first thing that we have to bear in mind while starting to write. In English, as is with most of the Indian languages, the writing is from left to right. Don't you think when you take a piece of paper, you begin with the left and then go ahead to complete it to the right. So from the left to right. But when you take about Urdu and Arabic languages, it is from right to left. Did you ever notice it? As you could find on the piece of paper as an example that I have given in the slide. Very interestingly, when you look at a language like Japanese, the writing is from top to bottom. So we have left to right, right to left, top to bottom, and sometimes it is pictorial as well. It's very, very interesting that the direction of writing is to be understood first. Then we go to the mechanics of writing. How exactly can we develop the mechanics of writing? The very first thing is copying the exercise. Don't you think this is what with we have started when we started learning English? The teacher would write A for A, P, P, L, E, Apple on the board and the teacher wants us to copy it into our copy. Not once, but throughout the page. Not throughout the page in the classroom, but given as a homework as well. Did you notice it? At a little higher level, a variation of this technique is to give a list of articles and ask the learners to copy them in the relevant column. Say for example, as you have it in the table. The words that are given are bus, table, jug, bed, car, tram, plate, cup, chair, saucer, train, stool. Now read them understand them and categorize them into three categories like the transport, crockery and furniture. So bus, bus is a means of transport. So bus will write under transport. Table, table is furniture. Jug, jug could be under crockery. Bed, furniture. Car, transport. Tram, transport. Plate, crockery. Cup, crockery. Chair, Furniture, saucer, crockery, train, transport, stool, furniture. Now, little complicated words also could be given. These at least are known words. Unknown words could be given. We can ask the students to find out the meaning of it and accordingly categorize them in the table given. This is a very interesting um, you know, exercise that will enable the students to read the words, understand the meaning of it, and categorize them depending upon their use. Matching pictures to sentences could be another very interesting way of motivating the students to write. Now the pictures are to be looked at. Somebody is skiing on the snow. A boy is riding the bicycle, number two. Number four, the rabbit is running across. Number six, you could find the ice man. Number one, maybe the children are in the garden with their balloons. And number five, um, somebody is decorating the pumpkin. So you understand the pictures first, then read the sentences. The kids are painting. So the very first, attach it with the first. Ralph rides the bicycle, number two. Mark it. Richard is skiing, number three. The bunny hops along, number four. Peter likes decorating the pumpkin, number five. And Harry is building a snowman, number six. So we need to look at the pictures and understand the pictures. Then we have to read the sentences and match them. This is a very beautiful exercise which will enable the individuals to read, match and rewrite in their notebooks. Identify the wrong and right sentences and copy only the right sentences. Now here it is already given as correct and incorrect. The incorrect are given in... A red color and the correct one are given in the 
green color. When we are giving the exercises to the students, the students have to make out whether it is correct one or incorrect one. In the modern sense, it is not, uh, the terminology that is used is acceptable or unacceptable. And then write only the acceptable sentences in the book. Now, this requires the understanding of the grammar, the grammatical concepts of the language. The very first uh, slide that we have under acceptability is article. Because personally, as a language teacher, I feel learning of English poses three important problems. Number one is identifying the use of articles. Because Indian languages are not with the article system. Whereas languages like French, German, English are all article oriented language. The common noun or a collective noun in English cannot stand individually without the support of an article or a determiner rather. And articles are wonderful determiners. So uh, Indians, uh, wherein the Indian languages don't require any determiners for the nouns to stand upon, find the use of articles very difficult. And because they are not there in our language, we obviously find the appropriate use of articles in English also to be very inappropriate because we don't, we are not in the habit of using articles. Mature speaker of English, mature learners of English also find the use of articles difficult. The only way to avoid this difficulty is to get ourselves acquainted with more number of rules related to articles and get ourselves acquainted with the native speakers of English so that the usage of articles will look more appropriate. For example, I have a good news for you. Now, news is an abstract noun, so it doesn't require an article. The right one is I have good news for you, not a good news for you. So you should understand the reason also as to why if the article is used, why is it used? If the article is not used, why is it not used? In that way, if you can understand the use of articles, I think it becomes very easier for us. Similarly is the next sentence, the men are rational beings. When you say the men, article that is used with the plural noun, obviously you are pointing out to those men who are in your mind and in front of you, not the other men. But here the use of the plural noun men is in general human beings. A generic sense, not specific sense. So when plural noun is used in the generic sense, you should never precede it with an article as a rule. So men are rational beings, not the men are rational beings. The boys leave the school at 4 o'clock. Now the use of article with the school is wrong because boys normally go to school as students and when school is used, Words like school, college, university, etc. are used for the primary purpose. No article is used is the, you know, the uh, rule of it. So, no article is to be used. The boys leave school at 4 o'clock, right? Um, similarly, I have read the Shakespeare's Macbeth. No, in front of proper nouns, articles are not used. So, I have read Shakespeare's Macbeth. Similarly, understand the use of articles for all the sentences that are given to you on the slide and elsewhere. Try to understand the reason or rule behind why is article kept if it is right, why is not article kept when it is right. Understand them properly and then write only the correct sentences. Another interesting uh, uh, part of speech which is difficult for the second language learners is the use of prepositions. Because Indian languages have the vibhakti system which is very well developed which are post positions and not prepositions. And so the use of prepositions in spite of the fact that there are 30 to 50 important prepositions that are used in the English language still becomes difficult because we have post positions and not prepositions. I congratulate you for your success. No, it's not for your success but it is on your success if it's right. He regretted for his mistake. No, we don't require any, you know, uh, preposition at all. To regret itself is to element for. So, for becomes a superlative here or, uh, or extra here. So, he regretted his mistake. That's it. He is afraid from the thief. No, from is not the right uh, preposition that is used. He is afraid of the thief. So, identify the correct ones and also know into the rules of why something is right. 
why something is wrong and write only the correct sentences after understanding the rule of it. A third place which is a bit difficult for the second language learners is in the use of tenses. My car, beautiful. No, the verb is missing over there. You will have to say my car is beautiful. It is not at Monday, but it is on Monday. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, it is not uh, what time um, it is. When you have a direct sentence, it is what time is it? He is more tall. It's not more tall, but he's taller. I play chess good. I play, you know, um, the adverb is wrongly placed. The, I play chess well, not good. So common mistakes, once you identify your areas which is difficult for you, maybe article usage or sometimes adverb usage, sometimes adjectives are wrongly used, sometimes we have problem with nouns, most of the times we have problem with prepositions and uh, tenses, identify those areas, read and reread and get your doubts clarified from your grammar teacher and identify the mistakes in it and write only the right forms. I have a good news for you. As we said, I have read the Shakespeare. No, the Shakespeare. He sent a word that he would come. He sent a word, not a word. So identify the right ones and only write the right sentences. But while you are doing so, it's very important that you know the rule of why something is right and why something is wrong. A systematic learning of grammatical part of English is important to enable you to understand the right ones and write only the right sentences. Correct the mistakes and rewrite. This is again very, very interesting um, way of understanding what mistakes can be done. Read the letter that is given to you. Dear Santa, hello, how are you? I am writing because I am writing. This is a very typical usage of the Indian using the present continuous tense. You have already written the letter. I write this letter because, yeah, I wrote this letter because I write. Present tense is better. Because my neighbor Tom and Jane doesn't have some toys. Tom and Jane, when you are talking about two people, it is not doesn't, but don't. So I write this letter because my neighbor Tom and Jane don't have toys. Some toys, no need to require it, don't have toys. The last week, no, the way is superfluous there. Last week, a burglar broke into and stole everything from their house. Even the children's toys. Though is not required there. Even children's toys. What a pity. W capital. What a pity. They doesn't have any toys. They don't have any toys. Or they don't have toys. I and my brother Jim. My brother Jim and I. I always comes later. Shared with our some toys. Shared with our toys. But it is not enough. They want more toys. No, they want more toys, not they want. They are, they are parents doesn't have any money. They are nahi. It is their parents don't have any money to buy the toys. To buy toys. Tom needs a new car, a gun and an eagle. Jay needs an elephant, an elephant, dolls and colorful ball. Please help them. So, you correct the sentences, automatically you understand what mistakes are and your grammatical rules and the knowledge about the syntax of English will definitely help you to correct these. So, instead of just sentences, maybe paragraphs like this and letters like this and asking the students to correct them and rewriting them. Definitely will help them to understand uh, language better and improve writing. One place where uh, the students find difficulty in uh, speaking also and in writing also, both speaking as well as writing skills, is lack of vocabulary. And to improve vocabulary, one need to go into the word lists related to nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, pronouns, prepositions, and properly understand their words and meanings so that they can write and speak better. So. Go for the lists like these. You can give them a simple task asking them to make a grid or a table, uh, living and non-living. Just read them, understand them and categorize them into living and non-living or into animal and human, etc. 
and it will be very good whale tiger so animal no head tiger as well as human arrow non living fish living salt non living eatable non eatable salt eatable paper non eatable non edible you know so uh, edible and non edible coffee soap so you can give a list of nouns and every day the list could be new to pick up the nouns similarly will be your words whenever we are doing with vocabulary items like these nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs we need to understand the meaning of it that's very important read the word know the meaning of it and use them into sentences that's very important of it and whenever you are doing verbs it could be always the base form present tense past tense and past participle so come came come eat ate eaten lay laid laid see saw seen but uh, raise raised raised regular verb zip zipped zipped wake wake woken use used used but um, you have the non uh, irregular verb like uh, hold held held so make an understanding of the regular and irregular verbs present tense and past tense and past participle form know the meaning of it and use them appropriately by making a sentence that will help you to improve your vocabulary in verbs especially then you have the adjectives you can have positive adjectives and negative adjectives know the meaning of it and use them dynamic dependable comfortable generous calm brave flexible detailed know the meaning of it and use them into sentences you can get hundreds of lists on the internet as well as in the dictionary and you need need to pick them up knowing the spelling of it pronunciation of it meaning of it and put them into use similarly are the adverbs where are the adverbs to be kept so that the meaning of it would be different um adverbs are very cu curious words which could be kept anywhere in the sentence with a changed meaning um uh, only i saw the key would mean that only i and nobody else saw the key only i saw i only saw the key when only is modifying the verb saw i only saw him i didn't speak to him i didn't talk to him i didn't report i just saw only is modifying saw i saw only the thief not the police who was there with the thief not the murderer who was there with the thief i just saw the thief only i saw the thief only and did nothing so the moment you change the position of the adverb you could find that the meaning of the sentence would be changed know the meaning of the sentence know the adverbs and they will use appropriately for an improved expression in writing as well as in speaking then know the opposites of it internal external long short major minor heavenly hell giant tiny junior senior husband wife identical different it's fun in the school days we might have learned all these things but under compulsion maybe not liking the process of it but now that we have grown up and we know that we have to pick up the language effectively and efficiently and only these are going to help us now let us revisit the same book revisit the same grammar rules revisit the same exercises with doubled enthusiasm and pick them up so that we can pick up the language effectively and use them beautifully similarly are the meanings in fact the opposites are quite easy many a times the meanings are very difficult so know the meanings of the words also and you have hundreds of lists of meanings as well as opposites very good books like van and martin farmer's book or maybe david crystal rediscover grammar with david crystal thompson and martinet university grammar of english um tactical grammar of english uh, communicative grammar of english reference grammar of english you have hundreds of grammar books which are helpful for you to pick them up to know the rules of the language and also to improve your vocabulary items another interesting way of improving uh, your writing skill is giving them the jumbled words in a sentence smart is very elex it's all jumbled you have to put them in the right sentence and write them out elex is very smart is the right one right 
these paintings fascinating are these paintings are fascinating is my father's name mason my father's name is mason an exercise is this easy this exercise is easy so give them the jumbled words and ask them to make sentence out of it and write the correct sentence could be a very beautiful exercise to increase uh, to improve the writing skills not only the jumbled sentences but a jumbled paragraph could be given <laughs> now these set of sentences actually when given a proper order will form a paragraph identify the words identify the sentences that go first and then next and then the third and then fourth and then finally so accordingly these uh, connectors these adverbs these conjuncts and conjunctions definitely help you to modify it if you look at the last sentence first so that sentence will come first after then finally so wherever you could find these sentences they accordingly go and the rest of the sentences depending upon the meaning you can put so that a meaningful paragraph can be you know created or constructed try it out try it out read all the sentences take 5 minutes and write <clears throat> put them in the right order in order to make a meaningful paragraph the next is read the following and write correctly can you read this oh it looks like italian or german or whatever no no it's our own english if you can read this you have a strange mind can you read this only 55 people out of 100 can i couldn't believe that i could actually understand what i was reading because to the phenomenal power of uh, because of the phenomenal power of the human mind according to a research at cambridge university it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and the last letters be in the right place the rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without any problem this is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself but the word as a whole amazing huh yeah and i always thought spelling was so important see i have read it myself i didn't use any piece of paper i have read it on the screen itself so can you so can you so write them you know read it and write it in the right order in the right way could be a very beautiful reading exercise as well as a writing exercise substitution tables and their use is very wonderful way of improving the writing skill this your school teacher might have used it in your school level but the substitution tables definitely help you to write many number of sentences i walked to the door quickly i walked to the door slowly i walked to the door quietly i walked to the door noisily i walked to the door carefully similarly i touched the door slowly quietly i opened the door noisily i put down the cassette carefully so similarly with i you can also use instead you you walked uh, to the book or you touched the book slowly make as many sentences as you can and thereupon so start writing all the sentences that you can make using the substitution tables once replacing the subject then the verb then the object and then the adjunct now substitution tables like this definitely help you in improving your tenses so you have different uh, subjects the subject number is more then you have different verbs and also the ad, uh, adverbs or the uh, helping verbs and plus you have the objects also so combine and recombine in various combinations in order to make a number of sentences and write them in your notebook the next interesting technique of uh, developing um, reading as well as writing skills are finding out the correct spelling e a t e t e double e t which is the right spelling yes it is e a t h o a r s e h o u r s e h o r s e which is the right spelling that's right h o r s e is the right spelling uh, d a w g d o g d a u g which is the right spelling that's right d o g is the right spelling similarly you have you know number s p i d e r s p y d e r s p i d a r find out the spelling of spider similarly turtle and frog and so on it's a beautiful way of improving 
your spellings and writing the spellings right. Then the jumbled words could be given and then you could make out the uh, right word. Now, this is a slide where I have given the solution also. B A T K N L. So, blanket. Uh, I E C. Yes, it is eyes. Right? A C S K O L. Socks. That's fine. R I T N E W. Winter. Yes, you can uh, have you know, um, a number of trial and error basis and find out the words. And this is a very beautiful exercise to improve. Uh, your spellings and also interest in the language. A number of such exercises you could see in the daily newspapers and magazines and so on and so forth to start taking interest in things in order to improve your vocabulary. Then this is word scramble. Scramble is a very beautiful um, game that you can play. Uh, scramble game is available. Uh, it's also called a scrabble uh, where you will have coins and you have a big board and in the board you have to make up the coins in order to make the correct spelling. Here you have the word scramble uh, on the left as well as on the right. Below the girl and below the boy, you could find jumbled letters. Make the correct word first and then combine it or match it with the opposites. Say, for example, as is given to you, right? Uh, C-L-O-S-E is the word that is made. O-P-E-N is the word that is made. Close and open are the opposites. So you learn the words, you also learn the opposites. It's a very beautiful way of learning. Uh, the spellings as well as improving your vocabulary. Then we also now know to read the graphs and write the graph in a proper way. Now the graphs can be the representation of great chunks of information in a, in a slide. You can have a line graph, you can have a bar graph, you can have pictograph, you can have histogram, you can have area graph and scatter plot. So six different types of graphs are there. A few examples I've given you on the right side, you have many examples of the bar graph, line graph, um, scatter plot, and also uh, uh, the middle pictograph. Pictograph is all human beings. So the pink ones are above, uh, say, 60 years. The light blue ones are between 30 and 50 years. And the dark blue ones are beyond 70 years. How many blues are there? How many people are beyond 70 years, etc. So answer the questions, understand the graph and answer the questions and answer the questions appropriately and write them in your notebook. Flow charts is another interesting way of uh, note making and note taking. Uh, say for example, the tomato chutney making is what I have given you on your slide. So read it in full sentences and write them. Take fresh red tomatoes and wash them appropriately. Sort them depending upon their ripening. Greens are to be separated. Reds are to be separated. And then all the red uh, tomatoes are to be blanched for two minutes uh, in hot water. And then uh, put them in the cold water immediately. Uh, then peel off the skin of these tomatoes. Crush them uh, in a mixer or blender. And then add the ingredients, accepting salt and vinegar. Cook gently to the desired consistency. And then add the preservative. Add then salt and vinegar also. Then fill them hot into the bottles. Seal them when they are hot and store them in the ambient temperature and your tomato chutney, which is uh, a, a long uh, time lasting, is ready to be dispatched and eaten. So you have to read the chart, which is given to you in very brief way. Make them into sentences and write them. Write the sentences and write the entire description of making the tomato chutney. Similarly, our reading maps. So here is the map of India with all its states and union territories. Uh, you can start describing it. If you are describing it, it is a speaking skill that is developed. If you are describing and also writing it simultaneously, your writing skill is. You know, describe all the South Indian states and their locations and their capitals. A group of your students will be describing all the, you know, western states. Somebody will be describing the northern states. And a group of people will be describing the eastern states and the middle Indian states, central Indian states. And somebody will be describing everything, the borders of India, like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and China, and Tibet, and Afghanistan, and so on. And, so on. and you also can ask the students to talk about the oceans that are, you know, that the, that the Indian borders are surrounding, and the Himalayan belt. So it's a very beautiful way of describing. Once the discussion is over with the students, uh, you can ask them to write a note on the um, various states that are in India, 
with respect to their geographical location, their capitals, and in what way they are represented in the map, with what color they are represented in the map, their boundaries, their borders, and so on and so forth. So one single map can be used, number one, in order to improve their listening skills if the teacher is explaining it. Number two, to develop the speaking skills if you want your students to read it out. Number three, for reading it. And number four, for writing also. So that is how these can be used for the integration of the skills. Similarly is the reading of the diagram and writing the diagram. This is the development of writing skill. What percentage goes into, it's a pie chart. What percentage goes into the development of the writing skill? Half, 50% of the writing is giving writing model example and training the writing by using the patterns and utterances. Some 20% is by explaining them the importance of patterns. Some 10% is giving examples and developing title into detailed aspect, um, either chart model of the map concept. Some 10% is giving example in developing the concept map in sentence and paragraph. 10% is supervising the students in writing and 5% is writing about the objects and students surrounding. And 50% is allowing them to write. So you have read the entire pie diagram in terms of percentage, in terms of weightage, and you also are helping them to write it. Showing them the flashcards and developing the story writing is a very beautiful way of not only developing the writing skill, but also developing their creative capabilities. Say for example, if this flowchart or flashcard is shown to them, what strikes you first? Don't you think that it is the story of the hen that lays the golden egg? Yes, you can come out with your own imaginative character. Once upon a time in a small village, there was a boy whose name was Gangara. He was a farmer and he also owned a poultry farm. He used to take a very good care of his hens. One day he found out that one of his hens, which was fairly golden in color, started laying a golden egg a day and not a normal egg. He was so surprised. He took this golden egg to the market and sold it for much money. The next day to his surprise, he saw that it laid another golden egg. And day after day, he could see that the hen was laying golden eggs. Gangaram had his wife whose name was Radhika. Now, Gangaram and Radhika were definitely happy at these golden eggs because selling these golden eggs in the market, they became very rich. But Radhika became greedy and one day she said to her husband, maybe the hen has had all the golden eggs in its stomach. Why can't we kill it? Open its stomach and take away all the golden eggs at a time so that they can become millionaire. The greediness of Radhika and Gangara made them kill the egg, kill the hen. Oh, the hen had only one egg in it, that too half formed. But the couple lost the hen that laid the golden egg permanently. So you should never be greedy is the moral of the story. So you have developed the story. Now with this, you can develop another story also with different situation, different names, and it is paid to the interest and imagination of the students. And ask them to write the story and come. Wow, they would love to do it. Similarly is, once these basic ideas of developing the writing skill are over, then concentrate on picking up the punctuation. Punctuation marks are full stops, commas, question marks, um, Exclamation marks, single inverted comma, double inverted comma, colon, semicolon, and capital. Use of capital letters. Once all these rules are explained to them properly, you can give exercises like this and ask them to punctuate. Sita ate an apple today. Sita is capital because it is the name first of all and it is the beginning of the sentence. Ate an apple today, full stop. When I went to Delhi, it was very cold. When, W capital, because it is beginning, I, first person pronoun is always capitalized. To Delhi, Delhi is a proper noun, D capital, comma, because the uh, phrase is, the clause is over. It was very cold, full stop. Excellent, E capital, and a, uh, what is that, uh, exclamatory mark. Wow, it's fantastic. Wow, W capital and an exclamation mark. It is fantastic, full stop. It, I capital. 
where do you live w capital and where do you live a question mark so capitalization punctuation and capital use of capital letters definitely and a practice of this in this way it helps them to improve their writing now punctuate the entire paragraph a paragraph of this sort with no punctuation marks no capital letters is given to the students and they are asked to punctuate it and they love to do it and help them wherever they fail to giving reasons and explanation rainbows are capital my heart m capital my heart leaps up when i i capital behold a rainbow in the sky comma inverted comma close my inverted comma begin wrote william wordsworth ww capital full stop or it continues comma the famous poet and most of us share his feelings when we are lucky enough to see a rainbow full stop there is an old saying t capital there is an old saying that a pot of gold is buried at the end of the rainbow but have you ever tried to reach a rainbow and question mark of course it's impossible o capital because the sentence is beginning of course it's impossible because a rainbow is really just the result of the raindrops refracting and reflecting light from our sun full stop t capital <clears throat> there are seven colors in the rainbow red comma orange comma yellow comma green comma blue comma indigo and violet full stop so punctuating the paragraph is very interesting when the students are able to do encourage them otherwise as teacher we need to pat them up and give the punctuate punctuation marks help them to punctuate the paragraph appropriately and give them the reasons to do so adding spaces is another very interesting exercise to help them write effectively now these words that are there on your slide are without any spaces even adding spaces doesn't have space so adding space spaces can you read them it becomes difficult if you don't give them spaces don't you think a paragraph on zoo yes i can read it a zoo is a place where many animals and birds live full stop they live in the closed areas in the zoo and the visitors can see them see them from the outside of the spaces there are people who to who take care of the zoo provide the animals and birds with the best care the authorities of the zoo take that the animals or the visitors of the zoo are not harmed in any way full stop could you read it say this is the paragraph with spaces it becomes so easy to read but without spaces it becomes so very difficult to you read so such exercises could be fun and students definitely would love to do it do you think using the apostrophe is a very important um, use in english and you can give them the exercises like words he is it was i will etc etc or you can give them the sentences the baby's duck and its mother the baby duck and its mother are in the swimming pool its mother its you have to give an apostrophe my dog is barking my dog's barking is irritating dogs barking apostrophe s yes. my school is known for its musical program its is apostrophe so fred's house is down the street from mine fred's house apostrophe s yes. so give apostrophe s yes and write it in a right way complete the sentences is the exercise that you have been doing right since the school level where what's your name so give the complete sentence what are these these are apples and i've got some in my shopping box so complete the dialogue by looking at the pictures and completing it fill in the blanks in general in the form of phrases clauses and also sentences these exercises could be very interesting uh, which will help us to pick up the language efficiently and write them appropriately dialogue completion so the waiter uh, the customer says waiter i'm in a hurry now a blank is given to you and you have got a b c d e one or the other should fit into will my pancake be long you spend too much money it's time to get up who is going to take my order may i have a money now which would come depending upon the waiter's answer and the customer's completion read the waiter's one no sir it's coming in a minute would it mean then i should have a menu no the menu is already seen and the order is already given right 
Uh, no, sir, it's coming in a minute. Please hurry up. I have to rush in 15 minutes. So what could be appropriate? Who is going to take my order will not come. May I have menu? Will not come. It's time to get up. No, he is not telling that. You spend too much money. Will not be appropriate here. Will my pancake be long? Can be the appropriate answer. So dialogue completion could be a very interesting way in which you can give the exercises to the students to make them write, read and think and write appropriately. Here is again another dialogue uh, completion. Ram's mother fell ill all of a sudden and he had to look after her. So he couldn't go to his school. Complete the following conversation between him and his teacher in about 100 words. The teacher says, Ram, why did, earlier you had a you know, guided one. You had been given some options. Here no options are there. You are free to answer them. Ram, why didn't you come to school yesterday? Madam, my mother was not well. So I had to take her to the hospital. So I could not come yesterday. Wasn't any, you know, wasn't anybody there to take care of your mother? Then Ram says, no, madam, father was out of station. My sister is too young to help her. Then the teacher, what? What did the doctor say um, that has happened to your mother? Then Ram says, the doctor said that she had food poisoning. Oh, I see. She's asking still. What is the answer? She ate the food that had come from a hotel. What did she eat that the food poisoning has taken place? So the, the answer is that she ate the food that had come from the hotel. The teacher says, oh, many a time hotel food gets poisonous. Don't worry. She'll be all right. She'll be all right soon. So Ram says, thank you, madam. So read the passage and complete the dialogue and write it in your notebook. Once these sentences are in our mind, we started with uh, spellings and words and pronunciation and uh, phrases and clauses and then completions and then fill in the blanks and dialogue completion. Now we come down to Paragraph writing, which is the next step in the writing skill. Writing process involves, in fact, three stages. Generate and think the ideas related to that particular topic. Give an order to all the ideas and make a rough draft of it. Then it is better to begin the paragraph with the topic sentence. Though experienced writers may place it in the middle or in the end also. Every sentence in a paragraph, remember, must be contributing to the idea main idea of the paragraph even today when you ask the school goers or the college goers as to what their idea of paragraph writing is after 10 sentences are over just stay in the paragraph no that is not the idea of paragraph every paragraph has got a topic sentence and the discussion over the topic sentence in the paragraph either through examples or through explanation or through cause and effect and so on and once the discussion is over and you are beginning a second uh, topic the paragraph will be changed so you should be very very um, particular about starting the paragraph and ending the writing a paragraph when you are starting the process of writing a paragraph the sentences in a paragraph or I say must follow a natural sequence one leading to the another so you should have the connectives with you you should have the coherence there you should have the cohesive connectors there the end of the paragraph or the essay also will be equally important to summarize the paragraph. The length of the paragraph or the essay will depend upon the topic and the discussion. It is not that four lines are over and you change the paragraph. Sometimes a paragraph may be just as short as one sentence or as long as one page or more. A paragraph or essay can be descriptive or narrative or expository or argumentative depending upon the topic that you are writing on. Once you have written it, always revise the draft and prepare the final draft by eliminating the errors. Because in writing, proofreading and revision of the draft is a must. So once you write it and it is finished, no, it does not happen. You have to revise and re-revise in order to complete it. So you have a topic sentence. I strongly believe that more people in Phoenix should use bicycles to get from place to place is the topic sentence. Then you have the body. The body might have three, four, five, six sentences as examples or explanations or supporting information, whatever. So first, bicycles are powered by the rider's muscles, so they do not create air pollution. Second, so you're giving the list of it. Second, increased use of bicycles would reduce our reliance on gasoline, preserving it for other purposes and allowing people to save the money that they would otherwise spend on fuel. Finally, Bicycling is extremely good exercise and would improve most people's strength and cardiovascular condition and help them lose their weight as well. So you have given all the 
first, second, and third. Three reasons as to why cycling is important. Then you have to close it. The closing is in the last blue line. Some people might argue that bicycles are impractical for carrying packages and other loads, but by adding racks, baskets, and panniers to bicycles, people would be amazed how much they can carry on these wonderful two-wheeled two-wheeled um, you know vehicles so you're closing it bicycles you're talking about one two three three important uses of it and so though some people argue against it by modifying the shape of the bicycle you definitely can use the bicycle and make it as your important means of transport close it so a paragraph should have a topic sentence the body with the explanation and information and a closing sentence Sentence starters like furthermore, coupled with, another reason, likewise, moreover, then, also, you have to have all these at your disposal. Sentence starters show with examples maybe. For example, for instance, to illustrate, as an illustration, especially, these words help you to give examples. They also can have time and order. Firstly, secondly, as you saw in the previous paragraph, after this, in addition to, to begin with, later, all these words will help you to give the time and order. Sometimes it could be comparison and contrast in the sentence starters. However, nevertheless, although, whereas, rather, on the other hand, now, these words you should learn to use properly as to which word would appropriately be used in order to express the right meaning of it so that your write-up will be very beautiful, having the coherence and cohesion. Some of these words which give you the cohesion are for addition it is and, as well as, moreover, furthermore, in addition to, on top that, comparing is similarly, likewise, equally, Sometimes it could be negative like but, however, apart from, as long as. Sometimes it could be contrasting like whereas, on the other hand, conversely, illustrating words like in the case of, for example, such as, one example is as shown by, and sequencing like firstly, second, lastly, third, next, now, subsequently, meanwhile, these are beautiful connectives which we need to learn to improve our writing and give a sort of order to our writing. Linking words with addition, comparison, exemplifying and sequencing are to be learned for a good write-up. Essays also and paragraphs also. Some more linking verbs are here. These are some links and expressions of opinions, contrast, rephrasing, results and consequences which are to be borne in mind in order to write effectively. These are some connectors, a cause and effect, emphasis, conclusions, persuasions. They have to be borne in mind in order to write beautifully and appeal to the audience. Say for example, look at this uh, paragraph, living in big cities. Although many people like to live in small cities, I prefer to live, although you are starting with, I prefer to live in big cities for three reasons. So you have to give three reasons. First, first of all, social life in big cities is active. Uska example. For example, I can communicate with different people and different cultures. Second, big cities have a lot of facilities which make life easier. What is the example? For instance, it's easy to find hospitals, go to universities, schools, and government offices. Third, living in the big cities is very helpful and useful, especially in finding jobs. What is the explanation? This is because there are a lot of companies that require employees. So to conclude, you have started with a sentence, given three examples. And then to conclude, living in big cities is beneficial in having perfect social life, enjoying good facilities, and finding good jobs. How interesting it is. Similarly, is a, this is a paragraph with reason and examples. This is on traveling. Traveling abroad is important for two reasons. So, you are giving reasons from the very beginning. First, first of all, you can learn new things. What is the example of it? For example, you can learn a new language. People sometimes travel just to go to learn English in Europe or USA. Second, traveling is very interesting. 
For example, people do many things to themselves, such as sightseeing or shopping. You can buy new things and see new places. Now conclusion, for these two good reasons, traveling abroad is very good. How beautiful the paragraph is, it's complete. Topic sentence, two sentences giving the you know, reasons of it with examples and conclusion. Effective paragraph also will have a cause and an effect. The lines in the green la uh, are the topic sentence and then you have the purple which is the supporting detail and the last thing is concluding statement. This is with respect to the eating habits. There are several reasons why many of us choose our eating habits and I will outline below some of these. The very first sentence is topic sentence, eating habits. What are the supporting details? Those of us who watch a lot of TV may attribute advertisements to our choice of snacks. On the other hand, see the use of on the other hand, the generous the generation who grew up with fresh produce probably favored fruits and vegetables as a result. There are, however, however is the connective, some of us who, despite having access to fresh fruits and veggies, still reach out to the salty snack late at night. This choice may be due to our upbringing. And the last conclusion is, as you can see, these are some of the reasons behind some of the eating habits. Always a paragraph should have a topic sentence and the ending sentence with supporting details, cause and effect, or result, or examples, or whatever. So the steps for writing a beautiful paragraph is, number one, decide on the topic. Then do the research and collect information about it. Outline and plan yourself as to in each paragraph what are you going to talk about. And then start writing by a simple draft. Always review, edit and format it and finalize the draft. That's a wonderful way of writing. Whether it is an example, whether it is a paragraph, whether it is an essay, whether it is an answer to the question that you are writing, these are the techniques that you have to employ. Then another interesting way of note take of um, writing the skill is note taking. Whenever you are listening to a lecture, whenever you are watching a film, whenever you are um, reading a book, it's a very good habit to take down the notes. And the note taking can be done in the form of lists, in the form of graphs, in the form of Venn diagram, in the form of diagrammatic representation if you are a science student, in the form of T-charts if you are dis distinguishing between two things, in the form of summary, in the form of posts, in the form of webs, in the form of diagram, in the form of bullets. All these are different techniques of note taking. And whenever you have taken down a note, you always should know to develop it into a note also, which is called note making. Now here is an example of note that is already taken care of in the form of a flow chart. You should be in a position to look at it and make a note of it and write it in the form of a paragraph. It is on headache. The definition of headache is that it originates in nerves and it causes pains. The pain would be on the base of the skull and behind your eyes. There are different types, change the paragraph, there are different types of headaches. One is the tension headache and the other is a migraine headache. The symptoms of the tension headache are that you have a bad pain in the head, neck and shoulders. The causes of the tension headache are driving, typing, or maybe sitting for a longer time. The duration of the tension headache will be normally short. Whereas the symptoms of migraine headache would be the pain on the head on one side with nausea and irritability. The causes of migraine headache would be certain foods, maybe smoking, or maybe very general. Duration of the migraine headache when compared to the tension headache is much longer, 8 to 24 hours and possibly you may have a hangover as well. The general causes of headache, next paragraph, the general causes of headache will be called hormonal imbalances or sometimes the environmental stress or sometimes maybe poor posture in sitting and sleeping or maybe spinal misalignment. You can get the short term as well as long term reliefs for the headache. The short term reliefs are ice pack, applying ice pack on your head, using dark glasses, having fluid uh, intake more and taking the painkillers. And the long term in relief that you can get out of headaches is to visit your doctor and follow your doctor's advice. Don't you think that you have taken the notes and you have also made the notes? I have orally said it, you can sit and write it down and develop it into an essay or a paragraph. 
summarizing is another interesting subskill of writing. This is the original text and the original text is summarized in the green part. The white part has got the original text and the green part is the summary part of it. Associated with summarizing is paraphrasing. This is the, the white text is the original text and the orange text is the paraphrased one. Now, what is the difference between summarizing and paraphrasing? Because both talk about almost writing a summary. Summary is a brief statement or account of the main points of the text, while paraphrase is a rewording of the text to clarify the content. Summary is shorter than the paragraph. And paraphrasing is a bit longer than the summary part. Summary can be selective, paraphrase can be specific. Summary condenses the text, but paraphrase clarifies the text. So sometimes paraphrasing can be more elaborate when compared to the original passage also, whereas summary is less. If you could look into the example, the original passage is given to you, a legitimate preface, a paraphrase is given, and then the summary is given. The paraphrase is occupying three and a half sentences, whereas the summary is occupying just two sentences. Did you notice it? Just the main points is summary. Main points and explained in a more clar clarified way is paraphrasing. Associated with this, you also have another subskill of writing, which is called as the pressy writing. Pressy writing is writing uh, of a paragraph reduced to one third of its length, normally using an indirect form and an appropriate past tense you know, usage. Always provide an appropriate title or heading to the pressy and highlight the most important points in the passage and make a note of it, is what is called as pressy. So, whenever you have as an example, the text is given to you, it is about trees and um, planting of trees, which is helpful for you. The pressy is given to you. If the, the main paragraph is, say, 100 words, you'll have to reduce it to 32 words. Maybe two words less or two words more would do, but definitely not more than 35 words. And always for a pressy, you have to give the title of it and give the word count of it. So the difference between a pressy and a summary is that pressy is small, miniature, original document and with the appropriate heading and gives absolutely the important points. Whereas summary is a short description of the original document and gives all points in brief. Summary is a bit bigger when compared to, uh, summary is a bit smaller when compared to paraphrasing. So paraphrase, summary and pressy are the different subskills of writing. Paraphrase is explaining the author's argument, its reasoning, its sequence of ideas, its own words. And the purpose is not to prove yourself correct, but to explain all the facts and arguments that are involved in what you have read. It does not matter whether you agree or disagree with the passage. Examples and illustrations might be included as the author has given. Paraphrase can be comparatively longer depending upon the author's statement. But a summary restates only the author's main ideas, omitting all the examples and evidences. The function of a summary is to represent the scope and emphasis of a relatively large amount of material in an efficient and concise form. In case of the summary, examples and illustrations are omitted. Whereas a pressy is, a pressy is a type of summary that insists only on the exact reproduction of the logic, organization and emphasis of the original texts. It's a miniature of the whole document, reduced to one third of its level. After the pressy writing and summarizing, we come to the letter writing as an important subskill of writing. This we have been used to formal as well as informal letters. In informal letters, the contractions are used, idiomatic expressions are used, phrasal verbs are used, and imperatives are used. Whereas in formal letters, we don't use contractions, we don't use idioms, and we don't use imperatives. In the formal letter, we use adverbs like very, really, totally, and use the connectors like to top it all off, on top of it all, and so on. We also tend to use abbreviations in the informal letters. Whereas in the formal letters, we use strong adverbs and use connectors, which are more formal, and use the full form of the words. The informal letters will have the exclamations and the use of expressions and use of your own emotions and so on. But in the formal letters, the exclamations are omitted and we are more formal when compared to the informal letters. So formal letters typically will have a sender's address, reader, receiver's address, subject and reference and salutation, body of the letter, 
complementary ending and signature as we are acquainted with. And here is a model for you. It is just a model you all have been already acquainted with and by making the students write the letter by giving them a topic, both formal as well as informal, definitely improves their writing skills in terms of technicalities and it also in terms of um, you know, content of the letter. The English vocabulary enriches and letter writing is an art by its own, especially the personal letters or informal letters that you write is an art by its own, allowing you a great element of liberty to describe whatever you are writing in your own way, in your own style. So the formal letter format is here, the informal letter format is here. Formats are quite simple, you are already acquainted with, you just have to practice them more. Now it is the use of email and the right of writing of email also is one of the important subskills of writing. I hope all of you are acquainted with the email writing, uh, which will have a from address, which will be your mail ID, then the to, which will be who to whomever the mail has been written. Then CC can be given, carbon copy or copy to. Supposing you are writing a letter to your sister with a car the carbon copy of your father. You want your father also to know it. Or you are writing a letter to all your colleagues or friends and a CC to your teacher also. BCC, blind CC, the recipient's addresses typed here will not be seen by others. And then the subject is, the subject is important. If the subject is not written, it will prompt you that the letter doesn't have, the email doesn't have subject. Subject writing is important. Then whatever you have to write in the email, very brief, but following the technicalities of it. Then you can have the attachments which you could attach with the key. So attachments you are adding with the, from the computer file. You can forward the same thing to others. You can have a CC, you can have a BCC and uh, supplied. So this is the sample of an email. I hope you recollect it the moment you see it. So this is the actual email as an example that I've given. The from is Tim Doda, Tim Dodds, and uh, the to is to me. Uh, then uh, the salutation is there, the images are attached. It should be very, very brief. Regards and Tim and two attachments are there. Did you notice that? So uh, when compared to letter, email is even more shorter and to the point. But it should have all the technicalities being followed. Then you have the biggest soft, uh, biggest um, subskill of writing, that is essay writing. Once you are acquainted with the paragraph writing, essay writing becomes very, very easy because a collection of a few paragraphs related to a particular topic is nothing but an essay. Now, essay writing can be developed in three different ways. One is guided or controlled writing. The other is free writing. The third is paragraph pattern approach. Controlled writing is the very first stage of writing. Guided writing is the second stage and the free writing is the third stage. In guide control writing, handwriting is given importance, copying is given importance, dictation and spellings are given importance and are sharpened. This would be normally at the lower classes of the language learning. Then the guided writing is by giving a graded writing, by helping in vocabulary. Some structures are given, some clues are given, some keywords are given and learners are motivated to write. They make mistakes and they are corrected by the teacher and again, you know, help to write. Free writing is the last stage where the free composition is then written by the student with appropriate use of language, originality of thought, freedom of expression, normally free from errors is then observed in free writing. So we start with controlled writing, then graded, guided writing, and then the paper. In controlled writing is teacher specific. It is teacher dominating, manipulative, structured, and predicted student responses are then observed because you give some clues there. It is pre-planned and it can be prescribed in curriculum. Whereas free writing is always student-centric, communicative, open-ended, unpredicted responses you get, negotiable objectives you could have and it could have a cooperative curriculum, which is a more recent way of learning the language. So, after having learned so many subskills of writing, what exactly are the subskills of writing then? Right, it starts from mechanics with handwriting, spelling and punctuation. Word choice, vocabulary and idioms, organization into paragraphs with topic sentence, support, cohesion, coherence, unities, linkers. Then the syntax comes into existence. Syntax is the sentence structure with the grammatical rules, sentence boundaries, stylistics, etc. Then the grammar, the rules of words, agreement, articles, prepositions, pronouns play an important role. 
content of course is important increased vocabulary definitely helps us to write with relevance clarity logic and originality the writing process then gets into getting the ideas starting with the topic sentence giving the examples getting conclusion getting started writing draft revising re revising it re revising it and finalizing the draft based upon the purpose of our writing the purpose of writing could be for entertainment could be for information could be poetic could be for justification and so the sub skills of writing are number 1 you could find mechanics grammar syntax till here it is in the hands of the teacher then the writing process begins which would be which could be guided writing to free writing uh, contents keeping in mind the contents audience purpose word choice and organization so all these are the different sub skills of writing related to note taking note making summarizing reading and interpreting the graph chart by diagrams <clears throat> doing with exercises of fill in the blanks dialogue filling paragraph writing letter writing email writing essay writing and so on so this would be almost the last skill that could be emphasized if we give an order of l s r w as the important skills of learning a language listening always is first followed by speaking then reading and then the writing skill comes in the end if you are able to write the language effectively with all the correct vocabulary items punctuation um syntax and um, and um, cohesion and coherence almost you have learned the language effectively believe me that uh, you cannot make the students pick up only one skill at a time in a single class in a single attempt it always will be a sort of integration of skills plus the integration of study skills also so you uh, introduce a particular topic in the classroom and make them listen and then speak by going with by launching a discussion then reading the text by flashing it on the screen and then making them write by consulting the vocabulary items uh, uh, in the dictionary and in the thesaurus and grammar books and uh, morphological texts and all that you are improving the study skills you also are enhancing the study skills through note taking note making allowing them to summarize the thing and then allowing them to elaborate the thing into paragraphs and essays with the help of what we come to the end of developing the language effectively and efficiently so we started our discussion with listening skill and we come to the writing skill which is the most important skill when compared to all the other skills to uh, prove that you have learned the language especially in the current education system where examination system and examination through writing skill that is emphasized writing plays a very very important role in proving that you have learned the language effectively and in doing so your punctuation marks your spaces your capitals your your uh, um uh, spellings and vocabulary and syntax play a very major important role thank you very much for having a patient listening through this video bye for now but see you in the next videos